So I'm talking to Charlie Gordon. Charlie is doing his master's degree yes. um, at UVic, and he's focusing on the issue of relationships between First Nations and environmental organizations. Yes. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. So what's the relationship, and how's it working out? <laughs> uh, well, good in the sense of uh, relationships between environmental groups and First Nations have been really important in, um, in spreading the, the information about these campaigns like Site C to a larger audience than individually each could. Um, and so my research has looked at um, how important these relationships are to efforts of reconciliation um, in Canada. and with the NDP's decision to go ahead with Site C, uh, their commitments to reconciliation and, and the United Nations Declaration of the Reds and Indigenous Peoples has been put into question as um, their decision to go ahead really flies in the face of their commitments and, and reconciliation. Do you want to comment on that decision and, and its impact on NDP promises basically on the rights mm -hmm. of First Nations? So one of the big, um, the important points is that with the UN Declaration, to, to have the consent of um, First Nations in projects that concern um, their, their lands. And so when you, we have two First Nations bringing the government to court over uh, insufficient consultation and, and treaty rights, I mean, this site, uh, Site C is on Treaty 8 territory, and in BC there are very few treaties um, signed here. So it's extra important that in the one place in the province where we need to be considering treaty rights, treaty rights has never been uh, considered in this decision. And the NDP, uh, by going ahead, are just continuing their, um, the predecessor's lack of consulting and considering First Nations. And can anything be done about that at this point in time? Well, I think events such as these are important because we're getting individuals together who are really passionate about these ideas and educating ourselves on all of the intricacies of, of how this decision was made and how this decision is, uh, is a bad one. And so by educating ourselves, we can speak to more people and hold our governments accountable to the things that they have promised. I mean, in, in their decision, they did say that they're making this uh, because they want to hold true to their mandate and the things they promised the, the province. Um, but in saying that, they're also saying that their promise to respect Indigenous rights is not one of those things that they're willing to, uh, to keep, promises they're willing to keep. For me, the interesting thing is in the national conversation about reconciliation and healing relationships between Indigenous peoples and, and, and Canadians, you know, we often focus on um, the historical legacies of, um, say, the residential school, um, with the TRC the calls to action and, and the commission to look into uh, Canada's very dark history of, of colonization. Um, but what's often left out of the question, or the conversation I should say, is that the reasons that the schools were implemented was to remove First Nations peoples from the land so that Canada could develop and, and grow. Um, and so land is really at the center of um, of the, the conversation of reconciliation and it's not being talked about. And so when we have um, environmental groups and First Nations working together on issues of the land, it's really bringing uh, focus back onto how our relationships to, um, to land and waters, to the earth, which you know, we can think of as environmental issues, you know, our, how we make decisions and who's making decisions about protecting the environment. Um, we really have to be including into that conversation and thinking about our relationship to indigenous peoples whose lands we are on and who have been um, uh, ignored. <laughs> yeah, um, ignored and, and pushed aside and had their land stolen from them. Uh, how, we, how we, as a country and people living together on this land, talk about um, issues of environmental protection and who's making decisions and how they're made is, uh, is very much a reconciliation issue as much, and as well as an environmental issue. We always seem to be reconciling for the terrible things that have been done to First Nations in the past while continuing to do them right now. Exactly. Uh, yeah. For future Prime Ministers and Premiers to apologize for in the future. Yeah. I mean, it's almost like a bad joke is being played on everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I think uh, with with my research, I mean, environmental groups in First Nations haven't always had the the most um, rosy relationships either. Um, you know, here in BC with Clackwood Sound and, and the Great Bear Rainforest, the War in the Woods sort of campaigns were that that really brought the attention of uh, BC's environmental um, movement. Um, did highlight issues of these were happening on indigenous lands and environmental groups would often work with First Nations if their um, their idea, their goals aligned and when they didn't they would just you know, continue to, to um, make their own decisions about the lands and the forests and not ask the, the local peoples. So continuing a colonial relationship to, uh, to lands and people and so now, especially with climate change and um, environmental groups recognizing the power that indigenous peoples have legally to stop um, projects like pipelines and, um, and LNG and fossil fuel infrastructure that uh, we know we need to move beyond in terms of our climate change um, mitigation um, and climate change strategy, environmental groups are now seeing that it's, it's really important to work with First Nations um, not only strategically, but also in, in solidarity to, to heal these relationships and think of new ways we can relate to each other and the land. Uh, and as you said, move forward in good ways rather than reproducing the same uh, challenges in the past. Thank you very much. Unless, unless there's something else you'd like to, would you like to conclude with something? Or? No, no, that's been great. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.